Hey, have you ever almost died? Like, have you ever almost died so hard that you floated above your body, you saw a tunnel with a light at the end, and then you went to heaven for a minute and Jesus looked at you and gave you a high five and said, you know what, keep up the good work, Holmes, head on back. And then you're back in your body here on earth. And did this confirm your existing belief that there is in fact another world awaiting us after the inevitable death of our corporal forms? Well, that was actually just your oxygen-starved brain desperately firing neurons and flooding your body with endorphins in an attempt to keep you alive. And sadly, there is no heaven or hell, and when we die, we're all just going to rot in the ground. Okay, just kidding. I don't know any of that. No one knows. But I have essentially just covered both sides of the near-death experience debate. You can honestly just skip the rest of this video if you want. There's no other real scientific evidence to suggest that a near-death experience or NDE is anything other than your desperate brain trying to keep you alive. On the one side, we have people who have had a life-changing psychedelic trip. And on the other side, we have scientists who point out that there is no evidence that anything was happening outside of their own brain. But I know that won't convince all of you, so I'm just going to keep talking for a little while. I'm thinking about all this right now thanks to an article I just read from Business Insider, which basically just describes a panel that the journalists saw at South by Southwest in which two scientists described their work on NDEs. If you're watching this on YouTube, instead of reading the transcript, just know that there were a lot of quotation marks in that previous sentence. The scientists in question are Jim Tucker and Jennifer Kim Penberthy, two psychologists at University of Virginia, UVA, who study near-death experiences from the assumption that they are describing instances where a person's soul leaves their body. And so they look at these and they also look at anecdotal reports of children who say that they are reincarnated beings. This sort of paranormal research is nothing new. People who believe in the existence of the soul and an afterlife for that soul have for centuries attempted to find empirical evidence for their beliefs. And after all of those centuries, they have literally nothing to show for it besides spooky stories. While other fields of real science have accelerated their rates of discoveries in the past few decades, Parapsychologists like Tucker and Penberthy are really just sitting here in the year of our Lord 2022, repeating the exact same things that their forerunners have been saying for a century. Uh, in fact, the, the reason why these people are paid to recycle elderly talking points is because the guy who invented the Xerox was a spiritualist and Zen Buddhist who believed in reincarnation. And in 1968, when he kicked it from a heart attack and left a million dollars to UVA, he set the condition that they set up a department specifically to study the possibility of life after death to be led by one Ian Stevenson. Stevenson was a true skeptic's quack, you know, back in the days when we expected more from our quacks. You know, he wasn't just a raving lunatic. He took his lunacy seriously, traveling the world and exhaustively collecting stories from toddlers who claimed that they were different people in a previous life, comparing their stories to records of recently deceased people to solve the case of who these children were previously and then writing it up in a scientific manner. Stevenson did come up with some great stories, like the one about a boy in Beirut who spoke of being a 25-year-old mechanic thrown to his death from a speeding car on a beach road. According to multiple witnesses, the boy provided the name of the driver, the exact location of the crash, the names of the mechanic's sisters and parents and cousins, and the people he hunted with, all of which turned out to match the life of a man who had died several years before the boy was born and who had no apparent connection to the boy's family. Wow, creepy, right? Only there's some problems. 
Uh, Stevenson didn't speak the languages of the people that he was interviewing, so he relied often on translators. They were usually in cultures where reincarnation was accepted more or less as fact. So even if the people involved weren't knowingly lying, there's a very good chance that they were misremembering things, putting words in the mouths of toddlers, and making the story sound more impressive than they were. And of course, then there were the people who did knowingly lie, like one translator who even Stevenson admitted had been very dishonest with him, but he still claimed that the stories he gathered through that translator could be trusted, Uh, a thing that his publisher at the time disagreed with, and they backed out of publishing his book because of it. There isn't a single story Stevenson gathered that can't be better explained as some mix of coincidence, exaggeration, and or outright fraud on the part of the subjects or the translators, if not Stevenson himself. But there are plenty of really uncomfortable, ableist, and homophobic consequences of Stevenson's beliefs. Um, For instance, if a little girl told a story about how she used to be a boy and now she refuses to wear traditionally girly clothes and only answers to the name Richard, uh, Stevenson assumed that that's because that little girl used to be a man in a previous life named Richard. If a child had a disfigured face, he assumed that that was because in a previous life he was a man who had shot himself in the face. According to Stevenson, any disease, disorder, or quirk of personality could be explained by a violent end in a past life. That's really gross. Really gross. Like, imagine hand-waving away serious birth defects as the inevitable result of a past life, and not a disorder based on genetics or environment that we can prevent or alleviate. Imagine a kid rejecting the gender they were assigned at birth and using past life hypnosis or something to fix it. Gross. So now we come to Stevenson's protégés, Tucker and Penbarthy, who are doing the exact same thing in their research, uncritically accepting stories of children who claim to be reincarnated from past lives. They also talk about near-death experiences as further proof of an afterlife. And again, there's just nothing new under the sun. People say they floated above their bodies in an operating room and heard every conversation the doctors and nurses had. There are uh, some frequently experienced details across these NDEs, like the old light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, They all like to talk to their dead relatives. All of this is taken as confirmation that NDs are really the soul leaving the body. And all of it is old news. Um, It's all been previously explained using non-paranormal explanations. Like studies show that people who float above their bodies and see everything that is happening are unable to identify a playing card left in plain sight or an image on a computer that's displayed in the room. People on anesthesia who are in no way near death report similar things like being able to hear what is being said in the room while under anesthesia. Scientists can recreate a near-death experience in random people by using hallucinogens like ketamine or even by throwing people into a centrifuge. There is absolutely zero evidence that this phenomena is anything other than the result of a brain under a good deal of stress and sometimes drugs. I'm very sorry to report all of this for several reasons. Like, first, because all of this was already debunked decades ago. Like, come up with something new, or at least stop weaseling into mainstream news sources. Second, I hate reporting all this because it means UVA is still spending money on this quackery, and the students who pay tuition should be pretty pissed about it. Like... I'm sure even the school's founder, Thomas Jefferson, would be really pissed about it. Maybe he's been reincarnated as a student who can, you know, lodge a formal complaint. And third, I hate reporting on this because I really do wish that there was life after death. It would be great if death wasn't just the end, but instead a transition to a new, better world where I can join my loved ones and we can all hang out in paradise and laugh at the people we hate being tortured in hell for all of eternity. Like, that sounds super fun. I mean, until I think a little too long and hard about 
what tortured for all of eternity means and whether or not anyone really deserves that. And yeah, even in the case of reincarnation, it would be really great if, uh, you know, I knew that I would get another go round <laughs> to try again. You know, think of all the mistakes I would fix. Like, I definitely would not try to eat an entire bag of pixie sticks in one afternoon only to barf up a rainbow of sugar again. Last weekend was rough. But as much as I want there to be something after death, unfortunately, there's just no evidence for it. And for that reason, I have to reject it. Ah, the life of a skeptic. It's not always fun. <laughs>